Oh no, what did I drop? Maybe I shouldn't do that. Let's start with the elephant in the room. Why do I have another GAN 11M Pro? Right now, GAN is being that annoying friend who says they'll show up and then says they'll be late and then now they're not coming. This is the GAN 11M Pro soft texture. Wow, that feels a little weird. Wow, this is really weird. It's probably just because it's a new cube. I can't turn properly. The GAN 11 was supposed to come in many variations. They were black or primary internals, and the texture you feel on the outside would either be frosted, soft, or UV coated. Okay, to really understand how this feels, on most stickerless cubes, the way it reflects the light, this is actually glossy plastic. It has a lot more friction on it, so it's harder for me to move my fingers across it. Under certain conditions, like if your hands sweat more, this could actually feel a little bit sticky, but generally it feels quite good to hold as your finger won't be slipping around during your algorithms. Most GAN cubes come in frosted plastic, and this is slightly more slippery, and it doesn't reflect the light the same way, um, but this is definitely still something that I like. The soft version, besides being like soft, uh, it actually is even more slippery. So I know some people already don't like frosted, so you probably wouldn't like this either if you don't like frosted. The closest thing to this soft sort of feel is kind of like the rubber part on uh, the grip of a mechanical pencil, but of course not exactly the same. That's just the closest thing I can think of. Okay, I figured it out. So my right hand is generally holding the cube like this steady. And if there's less friction, I can just hold it tighter, I guess. With my left hand, I'm actually doing more very precise movements. Like maybe at some point I have to get my thumb and I hit the corner instead of hitting right here and then just slips off. So a lot of times with the very precise finger movements and I have to grab a small part of a layer to make sure it turns. This probably is something you could get used to, but it's definitely a little bit difficult for me right now. I'm gonna use this a lot for the next while to kind of test that out, but also I wanna know if the plastic will actually fade its texture. For example, with my primary GAN 11 and my black GAN 11, I actually have used the primary for longer because I got it first, and this does feel slightly less frosted than this one. I've also experienced this with older GAN cubes, so I'm interested to see if the soft will do the same thing. The production of these extra textures has been really delayed, but Cameron told me recently that the latest update is they are just not making it anymore. So things may change in the future, but for now, the GAN 11M Pro only comes in frosted. That's unfortunate to hear, but I will be getting a UV coated one as well. They did make some, I guess, but not enough to actually give to everyone who ordered it. I'm still excited to use soft more and also try UV coated to see what they're like. And maybe in the future, GAN will actually make cubes that have these that are mass produced. Next, we have a one by one. This is so weird to hold. I've actually never had a one by one, so I'm really glad to add this to my collection. I don't think I'm gonna scramble it right now because I don't know how to solve it, but I'll go watch one of those tutorials out there. All right, this one has this lump right here. It's probably for the keychain. So let me pull that up and let's attach this. There we go. I like that this cube can be a keychain, but the hole that you attach this to doesn't have to be part of the puzzle. So you could actually push it back in which I think is really good because now it's just a one by one and like there's still this, but you can barely notice it. Also, I tried putting it back in the box and I noticed this doesn't actually fit in the box. See, it's actually as tall as its container. So when you put it in the middle, the plastic will just bend and bulge up. And so this doesn't move. But if you move it to the corner, it just doesn't close anymore. Obviously not a big deal, but this is just a really silly design error. Oh, and keep in mind, having a bump like this is not competition legal. Next is the Diane Guhong version four. I think this is too loose right now. It comes with a screwdriver and a drawstring bag. I like the Moyu screwdrivers more. Okay, that's much better. When the Guhong version three came out, I thought it was sort of a nostalgic thing because the Guhong was such a famous cube, but the Guhong version three was not all that good. But after using this, I think it does have its place. I think the main difference between this and something like the Tengyun is the Tengyun and the version two, which I can't find right now, have such a unique 
specific soft feel that I think is something that a lot of people like, but also generally speaking, I wouldn't say this is gonna be everyone's favorite. Meanwhile, the Guhong version four, I think is just a really solid cube and it has a much more generic feel, kind of like the Moyu or YJ budget cubes. My main problem with this is the corner cuts are not that great. Like it can do them, but it's gonna have slightly more resistance on the regular corner cuts. Just for the purpose of corner cutting, this may be slightly too tight right now, but when I had it looser, then I just didn't like the feel of the cube at all. So it was either feel more flimsy or have slightly worse corner cutting, and I just picked the worst corner cutting. So I don't think this cube is amazing, but I think you can't go wrong as it is quite good. Also, I have two things to say about the way it looks. I think the center caps just don't match the rest of the cube. And the logo sticker is a circle, so I think that would actually help it stay on longer if you like logo stickers. Now we have the X-Man Shadow V2 again. Ah, oh, jeez. So a while ago, I already received the X-Man Shadow V2M, but this is a sample version and I don't know if there are any differences, but at least now I have the final version because I said it wasn't very good and you guys told me that maybe I should get the final version and try it out again. So far from just doing turns, it feels exactly the same. Not that good. So I have a few problems with this, but the biggest one is the second layer just has a really tough time turning. The magnets feel way too strong and the corner cutting on it feels really bad. So just for comparison, here's the outer layers. And here's the second layer. I'm actually trying my best. Actually, a trying my best version would be going very slow because then I can't make any mistakes. Did you hear that sound every time I did the index finger turn? That's how much effort I have to put in to get it to turn. I don't think it's the magnets only because this is fine, but when I start doing the actual turns, the corner cutting makes it really hard. And the corner cutting is just not that great to begin with. I'm gonna move this over by one piece there, line to line, and show you. So that is somewhat of a difficult corner cut. Now on the MGC 6x6, I'm gonna go over by the same amount, and it's very easy. Another one I'll show is if you do the second layer half a piece right there, and then try and reverse corner cut. See how loud that was? I, I tried it earlier, it just actually sometimes doesn't do it. And now the MGC 6x6, let's go halfway again. Very easy. Also turning the second layer is no problem on this. I think the two Shadow version 2s I have are the same thing, and I've used this one for a while. It is nowhere near as good as the MGC, so I would recommend the MGC over this. Here's an 8x8, the MF8. The turning itself is fine. Um, the main problem I would say is just my fault. Um, I personally, I'm not very good at holding the layers yet. So the way turning generally works on big cubes is if I wanna turn the second layer, I wanna make sure that the other layers don't move. So not something like this. And there are two ways you can do that. One is by moving your thumb over, which generally is not that good because something like this is already really hard to hold. So you always want your fingers at the back to be blocking the layer you don't want to move. And since I don't do eight by eight, I have no practice on that. Like if you gave me a six by six and told me to turn the second layer, then immediately my finger would go right here because it just knows where to go. Other than that, I think as long as you try to turn accurately, this cube is actually quite good. It doesn't do too many lockups and I'm not gonna try and turn too fast on it. Now, why do I have this? Well, a lot of you guys have requested a very specific video from me, so you'll be seeing that soon. I gotta kill a minx. Oh, this, this is so weird. Every time I turn one side, everything else starts moving. Okay, sometimes it just doesn't corner cut. I think it's the blue's fault. Yeah, so uh, I have to make sure this is pretty well aligned. But other than that, like just the smoothness through each turn is fine. As long as I try to turn accurately, this should be okay. I'm not super into non-WC events. I don't even really like Mega Minx, but this is just kind of for fun. I've been trying to add to my collection some other non-WC things that I can solve. I've never done a speed solve on this though. So actually, let's time it with this. I am old enough. What the roll of paper? So here it is, the limited edition speed stacks timer and mat. I really like this sort of design they have here and on the hand pads here, but for the rest of it, I think they could have just used that similar idea. I don't like that you can hardly see anything here. How this works is you can mount the timer onto these things and then now they can move together. Overall, it looks cool, but I'm not personally a big fan of these giant mats, especially like, so you have one from Speed Cube Shop as well. I personally prefer the mini mats as they're a lot more portable. Now this is a bit unfortunate. I have little green marks on the stack mat timer, and that's just because 
this thing came wrapped around it and I guess the green just rubbed off. Now all I have to do to get started is remove this thing and now it should be able to turn on. Now I'm gonna do probably my first and only times Kilominx solve. This is basically a two by two version of Megaminx as it's all the same except there are only corners. So I think I'll start with the white side as usual. Uh, where's the last white piece? Far away, all right. I guess I'm dealing with that later. Let's just do these two. Uh, let's see, this one has red on it, so it can go like that. And yellow, blue, uh, how do, how, do I, how do I do this? Like that, and the last one. Oh, I can't turn this. Like that. All right, first layer is done. Now I need like green, purple. Uh, like that. Now I need red, green. This is just twisted. Wait, like that. All right, uh, red, blue. Um, How do you, I'm trying not to like, do twisting algs on this. There we go. And yellow blue. Where's, uh oh. Oh, it's this one. I thought that one was solved for some reason. And now yellow purple. Um, like that. All right, first two layers done. Now I need, this is the last green piece. So I just need that green in there. This is red. This is blue, and this last one is yellow. Is that the last one? No, there's one more, purple. I'm used to there being four. All right, last layer. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe I'll do OLL first, just by corner twisting with the beginner method. Okay, um, this is where being able to turn well would be nice. All right, now I need to get them in the right spot. So let's say that one's in the right spot. These, this is a three cycle. Okay, yeah, I think you can avoid parity um, just by making sure you have a three cycle at the end. What? Okay, there and back. Okay, nice. Wow, no, that could have been sub two if I didn't like take a moment to look at it because I forgot I was timing because that was like not even really a speed solve. <laughs> Hang on, I solved Mega Minx faster than this. Thank you to Speedcube Shop for sending me all this stuff. If you want to buy anything, use the discount code JPERM. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.